Hello and welcome to Peterson Portable Sawmills Digital Demo Day. Um, we are starting a little bit late than we'd planned because we've had uh, quite torrential rain here this morning which has resulted in a deluge around the mills but that isn't a problem for sawmilling, is it Chris? Never. We love milling in the rain, don't we, Chris? <laughs> love it. Just makes more sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> so while we, um, we're just going to fix up some technical difficulties and then we'll have the proper camera on board. For now, you'll have to put up with my mobile phone and shaky hand um, because we are going to uh, start getting into our live demonstrations. So this is the first time we've ever done this, um, set up all of our mills in our factory yard here in Rotorua, Rotorua New Zealand. Um, we decided to do it because of COVID-19. Uh, and we know that a lot of countries are still in lockdown and unable to attend live demonstrations or trade shows. We wanted to showcase our mills to the world. Um, we're really proud of them and so we've come up with the idea to run them all for you today. So we're going to be running the Junior Peterson, which is just behind me here. We're running that first and we're going to demonstrate cutting dimensional boards as well as weather boards and planing and sanding on the Junior Peterson. So it's certainly uh, junior in size compared to our other mills but not junior in functionality so we're really looking forward to running that for you. Um, so I'm just going to introduce you to one of our sales team Greg Sheehan who's going to uh, tell you a little bit about the Junior Peterson. So I'm just going to turn my camera around, sorry for the manual styles and shaky hands for now. Hi Greg hi, hi, and hi Chris. Hi. Um, so Junior Peterson, it has been so popular, um, especially in the last year, I've noticed that more JPs have been going out than almost any other. Um, why are people so interested in this mill? Well, they're a great little mill. They're just a, a, a downsized version of our commercial winch production frame. Um, and it suits so many different people. It's, um, it's a great price point. Um, it's great for hobbyists, um, for um, part-timers, for farmers. It, it just fits a whole lot of different um, different uh, scenarios and that's kind of how we promoted it initially isn't it for hobbyists but mill that you can build a home with and it is a real great little production mill so um, and, and we're talking maybe producing up to four cubic meters that's sort of 16 1700 board feet mm. in a day mm. um, that, that's a very very capable mill yes absolutely yep. Yep. and so the other features that this mill offers is obviously being able to fit a clip-on slabber to it it's it pretty is, huge it is so it, it'll cut dimension timber um, it, it'll put the clip-on slab we can cut slabs with it um, we're going to show you the planer blade as well mm. uh, so we can finish our slabs um, and following that we have the sander kit so we're getting right through to a tabletop or a bench top finish mm, mm. so a, a wonderful little mill and and also um, weatherboards we're going to show you how to cut weatherboards so mm. it, it's a it's a truly versatile mill um, well priced um, and attractive for people wanting to get into sawmilling. In the blade so what uh, dimensions can the blade cut? So um, this particular mill has a, has a standard six inch cut, mm -hmm. um, but we can double cut using both sides of the blade. So we can get a, a horizontal cut at 12 inches. Um, that's quite impressive. And mm. um, 12 inches by four inches or 300 millimeters by um, 100 millimeters. <laughs> Thanks Chris. <laughs> Thinking about numbers there. Um, that, that's quite a sizable beam. So mm, mm. from this little, little mill, it's, it's a very, very impressive. And the other, um, one of the other specs that I know people love about it is that we can put uh, track extensions on this mill. Sure. So yeah. our standard mill, as we're standing beside here, is a, a 5.7 metre long tracks. Mm -hmm. um, so we can fit a 4 metre log in there. Um, the track extensions just add on to the tracks. We can go to whatever length we like. Yes. Um, and commonly we sell a 2.85 meter extension. Okay. Which lets you put a six meter log in here. So mm, um, mm. again, a very versatile mill. Mm. 20 yep. feet for the Americans. Right, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of people watching from all over the world. So, um, yeah, sorry if we're not using the measurements that you're used to, but um, I'm sure you'll suss that out. So, we've got all of the specifications for the Junior Peterson on our website, petersonsawmills.com. Um, what we're going to do shortly is Chris is going to start the mill up and we're going to do some dimensional boards, but after that, we're going to um, do some cladding, right? Some weatherboards. Yes, yeah, weatherboards. 
Yep. Yeah, awesome. So um, what we'll do is we'll let, uh, actually I should introduce you to Chris because I haven't yet, he's just been the <laughs> smiling metric converter in the background, um, but Chris Brown is our mill, we have mill, mill specialists and then we have mill experts and that's what Chris Brown is. Um, Chris and I have travelled the world together demonstrating these mills and he's travelled the world many times training new owners on these mills, so you are really a wealth of knowledge. Being on the camera isn't your favourite thing, but you're no. blimmin' good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining yeah. us. Um, just one more thing about the little junior too that we mm. haven't hit on is what makes it stand out from a lot of other smaller mills is its capability and log size, not length, but right. also diameter. Okay. Um, we advertise that we can do 900 mil, which is actually three feet. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have done a four foot diameter, which is 1.2 metre log in this little machine. Wow. So if you can envisage a log that size and diameter and 20 feet long, that's a lot of board feet that you can get out of a log. Mm. And it's all done, just the way we do a, a small log as well, you're not moving the log at all. It's, mm. it's too much effort moving the log, it's easy to move the blade. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we'll let you crank the mill up, um, Chris, and we'll get into cutting some boards. Then we'll lower um, the mill bed down and we'll get ready to do some weatherboards after I'll, that. I'll run the mill on my own as well. Um, a lot of the people that do buy this mill, um, they're for people that are living off grid, especially in Canada and the United States and so mm. forth. Um, and obviously you're, you're running things on your own, so I'll demonstrate how I run the mill on my own to give you an idea of just, just how easy it is. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Got a bit of product placement happening here with Komatsu in the background. We share the yard here with them. So as you can see, Chris is milling with the blade in horizontal position. He's doing the horizontal cut. When he gets to the other end, into the vertical bear by winding the dial across to his desired measurement. Now you'll see him at the far end of the mill and he is changing the vertical um, sizing just with one winch. So just one movement involved there, lowered it down and now he's going to be taking the weight off the left hand side of the log. Milling back in vertical, flipping the blade and milling forward. Sorry, we had uh, a little technical issue with the internet there. Could be to do with um, the weather here at the moment. It's the middle of winter here in New Zealand, uh, so we picked a great time to do a demonstration, didn't we? But that's all right. We're back online now. So Chris has been demonstrating one man milling, but we've now brought Pete along to give him a hand. Chris has got a long day ahead of demonstration, so Pete is going to what we call tail out for Chris. bit of taper in that log you can see um, the front end sort of come up rise a little bit as Chris goes through the cut but the JP has no worries about it.
Empress now taking the waste off the edge of the log once more and we've already cleared a layer and Pete's piled some boards here for us that's pretty good Chris is also a custom sawmiller um, so he has his own business doing that when he's not building or designing our sawmills um, he doesn't have a lot of spare time on his hands but when he does he's normally out uh, mobile milling and uh, so Chris often does jobs here at the factory uh, custom milling for some of the customers around the Bay of Plenty and Central North Island area. So the JP is run on a 13.5 horsepower Brisbane Stratton engine uh, which is a perfect match for the 6 inch blade uh, you don't have any bogging you know as long as you've got your um, blade adjustments nice and uh, tightly sorted then um, yeah then it runs through nice and easy so Chris has just showed us taking off the top of the log and a layer and we're going to shortly move into uh, weatherboard cutting before we do that though um, Chris would you mind just showing us the horizontal sizing on the JP yeah, sure. I'll just come down this end just show us how the measurements work okay all I'm doing is every time I finish cutting a board here this loop the unit just, I move over and it hits the side of the main center unit just give that a little light nip you don't have to be forceful on and then Sorry America, but this is a metric at the moment for <laughs> the rest of the world. So if I'm after say a 25mm board, I'm reading off this side of the gauge, I'll wind it over, there's my 25mm. Mm -hmm. So I'll wind it over just till that gets to 25mm, lock it, and that's it. Done. Awesome. Too easy. Yep. Okay. Very simple to do. Yeah. And what about the vertical sizing? So I was talking about just one winch is needed to raise and lower the bed. That's correct. Can you just show us this guy? So this is, again, it's all a metric, so what you do is when you want to come down a new layer, mm -hmm. all you do is you move this gauge down so this sits on the bottom of the, see this little black curve yes. line here? Yeah. Sits that on there. If I want to go down, we'll say 30 millimeters, just yes. for namesake. Yes. Hold the winch, wind it down, and just go to 30, reading this side of the gauge, and okay. I stop it right on there. Right, okay. Now, the beauty about this sort of system, though, is that if I go too far, Yes. It doesn't matter, you have not lost any data, you can just click on back up uh, until you hit your 30. Right, okay. Sweet. Pretty simple. Right. I'm now going to go back to where I was. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Right, which is about there. <laughs> Showing its versatility again. Awesome. Okay, um, sweet. And the beauty about that winch like that is that if you are being very fussy with your cutting, you can cut around defects of the log. You can go up and down quite easily and cut around all the defects and get all your clears to maximise your log. Mm, mm, sweet. That's something that is hard to teach, isn't it? It just comes with practice. To Lots of practice. <laughs> lots of pra and lots of mistakes. Yes, you know? the sawmill itself is, I mean, you've trained hundreds of people. It's yep. it's pretty easy, pretty simple. It, it's very repetitive. Yes. So once you, you learn the basics of how to work it, um, from there it's just reading the log yes. and that's what you want to get and where you're going to get the best value out of it. That's right, yeah, awesome. Okay, cool, thank you. So um, with the weatherboard um, uh, capability, on the Junior Peterson that comes as standard, that's just standard, a standard yep. part of the mill, um, you can also cut weatherboards on our all-terrain sawmill and winch production frame. To do that you just need to buy a, a simple uh, attachment. attachment for yep. that. Yep. Um, so to do it on the JP it's pretty... Yeah, it's straightforward. straightforward. Um, clear some of the sawdust, it sticks to everything. <laughs> we have a, a double slot on this side of the mill. Come closer. Okay, yep, I see so it. So when I pivot the, the mill, the handle comes around and locks in this one here for my 90 degree cut. Okay. All I'm going to do to do my weatherboards is I'm going to lock it in that one there instead. Right, okay. Which will get my blade apart from being up and down, put it on an angle. Yes, okay. Oh, that's easy. Yep. And then what? Just move it over like normal and continue? Yep, you just move continue. it across what you're doing. Um, every second board though that you do, you'll do your, your first one flat, you flick it up, you do your angle cut, mm -hmm. then you'll have to move the mill over, by memory on this one, it's about five millimeters or mm -hmm. quarter inch, mm -hmm. and then you do your second board and then your weather boards will come out exactly even. Right, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Cool, so you're okay to run some of those off for us oh, now? We'll, we'll have a crack at it sure. so I remember how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. We'll let you start it up.
will once again apologise for my unstable camera um, holding ability. We're still waiting for our internet to come back online here at the factory so we can get the big camera. I'll show you. This is our intention to get this big guy up and running. So don't worry, that will happen soon. down this end so we can see the end of the board here. Pretty sweet, too easy. blade and it's slightly off angle. what it looks like post weatherboard cutting. I'll bring these over on the log for you, Layla. Yep, thank you. I'm a little bit out, am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> little bit of a guess there, was yeah, it? Would yeah, you normally measure? Bit, there was a little bit. Rushed them and, and under pressure here. But so basically they can do your tapered boards. Cool. So when you're doing your weatherboards on your house, obviously they'll overlap. Also called siding, is siding, it? And yep. yeah. Now the beauty about doing something like that is basically you're doubling the yield out of your log. Okay. So you're, you're increasing what you can get out of it, which is absolutely great. Mm. Um, and as you can see with, with the little junior, I'm only doing them 135 mil deep, which is um, just over five inches, about five and a half inches. Um, the reason being is that because on the pivot, the collar will rub on top of the log, so you can't get a full six inches or a hundred right. mil deep. I gotcha, okay. If you needed anything larger than that, then you obviously want to start looking at the larger mills. Yes, okay. Um, but for, like I said, people living off grid, yeah. on the islands, it, it's a great little asset to have. And, and and we have had customers build homes with these JPs too, haven't we? we we've had customers <laughs> build whatever you can think of yeah. JPs. They've, they've, built homes, they've done extensions on their homes, they've done barns, mm. um, it's, it's absolutely incredible the photos and information we receive back from people with what they've done with the little junior. Mm. Um, mm. In some ways we've named it incorrectly. Yes, know, <laughs> like, like, I wonder that. As you mentioned earlier, it might be a junior in size, but mm. it's certainly not in, in what it's capable of. Mm, that's right, awesome. Well, thank you for cutting those weatherboards for us, Chris. Um, and the next thing we're going to be demonstrating on the JP is the planer blade. Um, so to do that, we're going to be needing to remove the blade that we've got on there now and put the planer blade on. So I'll go and give you a close up of the planer blade before we uh, fit it to the mill. So that's our planer blade there. Six knives on there. So our planer blade um, works as, uh, it also works as a bit of a thicknesser. Um, so that means that you can make the entire surface of your beam or slab um, absolutely flat so 
what you do is when you turn it over and take the undulations out of the other side too, uh, your piece of timber will then be the exact thickness the whole way through. Um, look, the planer blade just makes um, smoothing out your, your slab or beam or board, whatever you're after, just makes it so easy. It's usually a really tricky job. You will see shortly um, that it's made very simple with uh, Peterson sawmill. So every one of our uh, sawmills can be fit with a planer blade. Um, so that's a really great upgrade for people who are, you know, making furniture or anything really that requires um, a smoother finish. Um, so I'll just take you down here to have a look at what Chris is up to um, changing the blade. How many screws in that blade, Chris? Four. Only four screws in there. Yep, luckily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, luckily on a demo day. So I'll just show you here what Chris is up to. Normally I leave it up in the vertical, but I'll put it down here so you can actually see it. You get given Allen keys and your kits um, to undo the, the screws, but as I get older, I'm a little <laughs> bit lazy, and I just have this little gadget here, and that makes my life easier. That's what a drill's for. That's it. So, I will put it back up the right way now, sorry Leila. Sorry, okay, no, <laughs> sweet as you do it and I'll adjust myself. You're good? Yep. Pivot handle's pretty handy, Chris. It's very handy. There's actually another feature that you can show them with a 45 degree cut if they want. It's a 45 degree cut. Um, we've got a, a position in the centre here. You're right, can we turn it? Chris? No. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> Here. Yes. There's a locking point here. Radio. Right and we'll set it at 45 degrees. Yes. So it's useful if you want to um, create yes. something. It's yes. useful to be a creative little tool. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah. Cool. Have you talked about the hogger teeth and the No, no. Can I have a look at the another close-up of the plate of Thank you, yeah. So it has three planar teeth. Yep. One, two, three. And we've got three hogger teeth. The hogger teeth do the hard work going into the slab. Okay. Um, they clear out all the um, the rough stuff and the debris before the planer teeth come in. Okay. So, um, it just helps the, the planer blade do a really efficient job. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of holes in that, but we don't require that many screws, no, do we? These, these ones are for the JP. Yes. And the larger PCD holes are for our bigger mills. Awesome, yeah. So we can use this same planer blade on all of our sawmills. Mm, mm, great. Got a few helpers out here today, which is lovely. You want to video the, how rough the board is before they plane it and after they plane it? That'll be great, please, Pete. Pete's giving us a hand today. Hi, Pete. Hi. He's been on camera before when we went and um, slabbed. What do we slab? A redwood or something at your place? Big Mac on the front lawn. Big Mac on his <laughs> on his front lawn. It was pretty pretty exciting. Oh, let's have a look at the blade. This is a JP blade. JP blade. Six teeth. So the, our blades um, can be re-tipped, right? How, how do people? do that so so these are the tips they're still flossed on um, the tungsten carbide tips yes and we have a re-tipping jig that you can do it yourself basically the blade sits upright and the re-tipping jig comes around to a point that holds the tip yes and with oxyacetylene you can still floss the tips off okay um, some people choose to do that but the majority tend to let a professional look after their blades yes so we call them saw, do saw doctors here in New Zealand, but um, around the world they may be a, a blade specialist or um, it's a very, very simple job. Um, every sawmill that we sell comes with a saw doctor sheet, yes. which is the specifications of our blades. Right, yeah. So our owners can hand that to the saw doctor and they know exactly what the hook and angles and everything are for our, our teeth. So, I mean, that's a pretty serious bit of blade. So for somebody who's only ever known bandsaw mills, right, with the with the bandsaw blades, um, this is so far from that, obviously in shape, but also in maintenance. Yes, because this blade 
as it sits on the sawmill is actually up this way. Yes. Um, but we, we can sharpen our blades on the mill. Yes. You know, to take them off. So every Peterson uh, swing blade mill comes with a, a sharpener with a sharpening jig. Yes. Quite a simple process, a little bit of practice and we sharpen this blade in, in about five minutes. Cool, and we're actually demonstrating that this afternoon on the WPF, so yeah, that'll be cool. And how does the sharpener, um, how is that powered? Is it's it just, just a 12 volt yeah. um, sharpener, like a chainsaw sharpener, but it's got a, a diamond wheel tooth, a, a diamond wheel on it. Right, yeah, um, yeah. Quite a thin one, and it just sharpens the, the, the face of the blade. Too, yeah, and yeah. The face of the teeth. And I mean, I've been around for uh, over a decade with Petersons now, and we've had blades last that long. Yes, as well reports it, of that. It commonly um, owners have blades that last ten years or more. Yeah, and they'll get two blades with their purchase. Two blades with every mill. Yeah. yeah, sweet, awesome. So that's great. Cool, thank you. How are you going over there, Chief? Oh, playing with blades on. Oh, now, awesome. I normally do, you know, slabs, beams, and so forth, but. I'm just going to do the top of this log. It's a bit wet, so the finish won't be as, as good as I like. But mm. just to give the people the indication of what it actually. Like okay. So let's get a close up now. He's dusted it off for us, so we can get a good look here. Uh, hopefully, you can see some texturing there, the crisscross pattern, Chris, which yep. is what we're after. Yeah, for showing that the blades running nice and true. Yep. Um, so you can actually see those ridges quite clearly. So we'll be able to have a look at that once the planer blades run over the top there and we'll see the difference. So you have it just sitting, it's it's rest, it's not resting on the log at all is it? It's just skimming over the... Just skimming over it. Yeah. Now there are times, the beauty with the planer blade is yeah, yeah, yeah. some people when they sit down their slabs they don't have enough fillets in between each slab and there's not enough weight on the top. And some slabs tend to dry and they'll uh, twist. Yeah, right. When you get slabs like that, it's a little bit awkward putting them on initially because they'll, they'll rock. Mm. But you just, I put a couple of little wedges on there and, and even it out. Mm. I then just skim over with the planer blade to make the first surface flat and then flip it over on my log surface and get them nice and true. Oh, true, yeah, um, yeah. And the beauty about this is that I can take up to 19 mil, three quarters of an inch mm -hmm. in one hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you let, slab is quite badly bowed you can you can level it out um, yeah obviously your slab won't be as thick when you finish yes <laughs> but you've still saved it that's you right utilize it um we did that just recently with a, a remu slab here mm. um high value timber over here in new zealand mm -hmm. and um one of the guys from work bought it in um it was his dad so we we dressed it up and he chucked the sander on it sanded it all down and his father was just absolutely over the moon. Mm. He's currently making the table with it at the moment. Yeah, so. yeah. And he didn't even break a sweat when he was sanding it? No. no. <laughs> a little bit of dusty shed, but that was about all. <laughs> That's awesome. What thickness should a slab be? What's an ideal sort of thickness for that? Um, again, they all vary. It depends yeah. what you're using it for. You know, coffee table, um, dining room table, boardroom table. Mm -hmm. They all vary. Mm. Um, I personally like to cut a lot of my slabs 65, 70 mil at least. Okay. Um, and that... It just gives you a little bit of meat, a bit of body there, so it's, it's not going to move as much. Right. Um, as you cut wider boards and they're thinner, you'll find that's where you get your most distortion. So if you keep keep that meat in there, mm. it'll be a lot better. Mm. Awesome. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Good rundown. Yep. Yeah. Let's get into it. Too much talking, not enough uh, planning and milling and things, eh? Yeah, we're, we're beating the rain. <laughs> we are. We're, yeah, the rain is holding off for us. It's awesome. <laughs> detail you're going to be able to see on my phone camera but I'm going to take you up a little bit closer so you can see how much he's taking off here. And we'll look at how smooth that will be shortly.
huge difference. So if I stop there, you can see the difference between the planer blade and the standard saw blade. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of little little lines here, which is just my blade adjustment. I can tell it's actually a little bit front heavy. Okay. So I can just do a minor adjustment on the mill to take that out to really get that nice. And you just, um, to do that adjustment, it's just it's a minute or so, yeah? yeah there's um, two little pads on the other side, and yep. I'll just wind them uh, clockwise <laughs> about half a turn, and that should take that out. Yeah, sweet. Okay, yep, cool. So you've taken quite a bit off here. Is that is that normal? Is that uh, it, again? It just depends on how much you actually want to take right. out. Um, you can take less than that if you want. You can take more than that. It it, it just whatever you're after. Just makes that grain pop, eh? Yeah, it does. It's it really pretty does. mint. Yeah. And then from there, once you've planed your tabletop or beam, whatever it is you're working on, mm. um, if you need to finish even better again, we have the sanding kit. You can put that on there and just get a little licking with that. And it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, um, thank you. Finished wood normally be better than that, uh, just it's wet wood. Yes, obviously. yes. It's like, like a normal planer at home, you, you, you dry your timber and get it dry before you plane it really. Mm, mm, that's right, yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much for showing us that. So it was what, about five, under ten minutes, wasn't it, to change yeah, the about, blades? About five, ten minutes to change a blade over. Yeah. I've done it a few times to get better at it. Yeah. Um, and like I said, the beauty of the JP, there's only four screws on there. Our 8 inch mills have 4 as well, it's our 10 inch mill that has the larger 8 inch, no, eight blade screws on it. Right. That's why I use that little tool, just to save a bit of time. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, well I'm just going to check in with the guys and see if we've got any questions okay. um, about the JP. Otherwise we're going to be back shortly um, with our all-terrain sawmill. That will conclude our JP demonstration for the day. Um, but we'll be sure and put this video up online uh, at a later date for you, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So, final look at the JP for you. If you would like to request a price list, just go to our website, petersonsawmills.com. On the left-hand side, you'll see a button there, request a price list. Just click that button, fill in the short form, and we will get the correct price list for your country um, sent through pretty much straight away. If you have any immediate questions, you can email sales at petersonsawmills.com, or you can call us in New Zealand on plus six four seven. 3480863. So uh, as I mentioned earlier we have had some technical difficulties this morning. I am going to finish this live video for now uh, and then we will be back online soon with our all-terrain sawmill demonstration. Uh, so keep an eye on the Peterson Sawmills page um, and the digital demonstration day page uh, for those links. So we'll see you again soon.